back again today to Second Kings. I've probably been in this book for the last two or three weeks. Amen. As our former leader would say, two kings. <laughs> Amen. Uh, so today I'm going to go to Second Kings 6 1 through 7. 6 verses 1 through 7. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this opportunity to stand in your presence and before these our people one more time. Pray, Father, that you will word to lips of my mouth, that the words I speak may be edification to yours, to your glory. In the name of Jesus, we speak. Amen. Amen. Second Kings started reading at verse number one. Second Kings six. Starting at verse number one. And the sons of the prophet said unto Elisha, Behold, now the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. Let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan, and take thence every man for being, and let us make us a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, Go ye. And one said, Be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servants. And he answered and said, I will go. So he went with them, and when they came to Jordan, they cut down wood. But as one was filling a beam, the axe head fell into the water. And he cried and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And the man of God said, Where well, fell it? And he showed him the place. And he cut down a stick and cast it in thither, and the iron did swim. Therefore said he, Take it up to thee. And he put it in his hand and took it. Amen. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his holy word. And what I want to talk about this morning, and I'm using it for a subject, when the head flies off the handle. Amen. When the head flies off the handle. The dwelling place that the scripture speaks of was a classroom where Elisha was teaching some young students. And it said it was too straight. In other words, it became too small. Maybe the class size increased to a point where the room became too small for the students. So they came up with a plan that they saw a need and they came up with a solution. Unlike so many who would point to a problem and leave it to someone else to solve it. Yes, sir. Amen. I would like to call people like that pointers. Amen. We encounter a lot of pointers in life. People who can tell you what's wrong, but never offer any solution. All right. Amen. They tend to see everything, and they point to a problem, but they never put in any effort to solve anything. All right. Amen. Hey, amen. Have you ever gone to a doctor? You might may consider a point. Hmm. You tell you what's wrong, but his medicine doesn't work. Amen. Amen. That, 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 that's the point. But it's a blessing when you have someone who sees a problem and come up with a plan to solve it. So these young students, they came up with a solution, a plan. I'm sure they had their blueprints. And they got all of that together and then they came to Elisha. All right. And they said, let us do it. 
Verse number two says this, Let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan, and take death every man a being, and let us make us a place there where we may dwell. Amen. In other words, they said, let us do the work. They didn't suggest tapping into the building fund All right. or raising a special offering. They didn't suggest selling fish and chicken dinners. Amen, amen. They didn't, didn't sponsor a church car wash. They didn't have the young people go out and stand on the street corner and try to sell cool water. Amen. But they decided that they were going to do it themselves. They said, let us do it. And Elisha answered and said, go ye. He approved of their solution and, and, and their, their effort. But as we look at the scripture, only one asked Elisha to come with them. Verse number three. And one said, be content, I pray thee, go with thy servants. Amen. Not because of his architectural skills or his woodmanship. Maybe Elijah has ne Elisha has never had an axe in his hand before. But I believe it was out of respect that the young man asked the prophet to go with them. Amen. He valued his opinion. And here would be no surprise. I'm sure the student didn't want to give the impression that they were trying to take over. Amen. Uh, that they were smarter and had better ideals like so many young people today. Amen. Who think old folks are too old fashioned and out of style to offer them advice today and to lead them. Amen. But I like to suggest to them that all old folks are not fools. Amen. Someone once said that you don't get old being a fool. Amen. There's a lot of wisdom that the old people have that the young man needs to learn. Amen. And one thing that a young person needs to learn is this. You can't lead if you never learn to follow. All right. Amen. Elisha Follow Elijah until the end to gain power. And 2 Kings 2 and 9 said that he received a double portion of the anointings. All right. mm -hmm. That made him a powerful man. That made him somebody that God could use. And so many young people today like to, as my father used to say, catch the bull by the horn. Uh, catch the cow by the tail and run with it. Amen. But you must learn to follow if you ever, if God can going to ever use you as a leader. Amen. So the young student, he avoided trouble by having their leader or their teacher to come with them. He said, I pray thee, go with thy service. And Elisha answered and said, I will go. Amen. So they went. And when they came to the Jordan, they began to cut down trees. I can see Elijah as he finds a comfortable place to sit. Maybe on a log or on a stump or some cool place in the shade. Amen. As he watched these young men go at it. Amen. I can hear the word timber all over the place, and I can hear the falling trees hitting the ground. Amen. These men, young men, I'm sure, were working like well oiled machines. Amen. Because their leader was watching them. I believe they had it going on. They were chopping down some wood, they had trees falling everywhere. And verse, verse number five says this, but as one was failing the beam. But that little three letter word, but, is something that we all should be prepared for. Right. Should always be prepared for that. It doesn't matter how 
where are you playing something and how you think it's going to work out there's always a but in there with everything that they had going on that little worried but jumped in there as one was failing a beam Dyke's head fell into the water. In other words, it flew off the handle. And when that happened, that left this young man, man standing there powerless to complete his test. Why Solomon said in Ecclesiastes 9 and 11, he says this, I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill, but time and chance happen to them all. Amen, this happened to us. Amen, that little word, but has stripped a lot of us up. Amen, I would have gotten that job, but. Amen, I could have been first in line, but. Amen. I could have been rich, but I didn't listen. Amen. All of us had a lot of have a lot of butts in our lives. Amen. That that set us back. And all this young man could do, standing there powerless, all he could do was cry out, alas. And according to Webster, it's an expression of grief, pity, or concern. <coughs> He said, Master, for it was borrowed. Amen. He's powerless, and now he's probably in debt. Can't work because the axe head is in the bottom of the Jordan, and he have no means to replace, amen, this borrowed axe. Amen. He can't earn any money. Amen. When the head has flown off the handle. So he is standing there in a useless position, crying out to the prophet that the axe had, the axe was buried. Amen, amen, strength and size couldn't help him. His friends and his fellow students couldn't help him. His skills didn't matter. His education didn't matter. There was nothing he could do. Amen. The axe was probably an axe of high quality. He probably had passed all the quality control tests. Amen. They probably had tested it in every way that they knew how. Amen. In, the, in physics, I learned that there, there are static tests. Amen. When they look at it and, and examine it, and then there's a dynamic test when they put it through the motion. But the real test comes when you put something in the hands of the consumer. That's when it is put under pressure. And you'll find out what kind of quality that you are really dealing with. Amen. Have, have you ever purchased something that broke down in your hands? Didn't perform to your expectation. All right. Brand new, but it didn't work. All right. Amen. I bought a cheap watch one time and it fell off my wrist. <laughs> Amen. Many of us, Amen. I'm sure, have, has been down that road. Amen. 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 But here, it's one thing when you buy something cheap, but it's another when you're supposed to buy something of high quality and it breaks down on you. Yes. Amen. We see in the auto industry they have so many recalls. Amen. All the tests has been performed. Everything has been checked out, but yet, amen, there are things that happen when you put the automobile in the hands of the customers. Amen. I know if it's going to be put to test. And when my wife gets behind the wheel, she got a pretty heavy foot. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I saw my brother in law John put him through the test. 
Amen. If they had to eat a break, I'd stand up. So that's what happens to this young man as he was filling a beam with the axe. Yes. And it flew off the handle. Amen. And people sometimes have a tendency to lose their head under pressure. Uh, as some people say, they fly off the handle. Amen. High grades and IQs and advanced education cases are no indication of how one will function under high pressure. Yes. Amen. Nobody can predict when the head will fly off the handle. Mm. Amen. When the head flies off the handle, this causes families to break up or to fall into poverty. Yes. When the head of the family flies off the handle and sinks to the bottom. Amen. I believe jails and, and prisoners are filled with people who lost their heads. Yes. Or their head flew off the handle and they did something that they wouldn't have done. <laughs> Amen. And they leave somebody else holding the bag, or in this case, the handle. Yes. So the young students, amen, I think of them. Amen. They were in control. As, he was in control as long as the head was attached to the handle. Yes. Amen. amen. You take a wife, she's in control of the husband as long as his head is right. Yes. But if the head flies off the handle, she's left holding the bag. Amen. So when that happens, uh, there are two choices you have. Choice number one is that you can go through the motion. Or you can beat a dead horse, as they say. But if the man continues to beat the tree with the handle, he's going to destroy the handle and bruise the tree. Because there's no power attached. Choice B, you can cry out for help. And that's what this young man did. He cried and said, Elias, Master, for it was borrowed. It's a good thing that one of them had enough respect to take the man of God with them. Yes. One who knew how to get in touch with the head of all heads. All right. And that is the Godhead himself. All right. None of the young men out there could do what Elisha, they were not in his position. Amen. But this man, this old man, knew what to do. Amen. He knew how to get in touch with heaven. With God himself. So thank God for the one who invited him in the first place. It's always a good thing to have a man of God. Amen. And have the Spirit of God go with you. Yes. Amen. So Eli when they came to Elisha, he asked one question. And the man of God said, where fell it? Amen. He didn't need any more information. He didn't cast blame on anybody. He didn't make any excuses. He didn't criticize the young man. Just show me where it fell. That's all I need to know. Unlike some of us, we would have said, didn't you feel it getting loose? Why didn't you lighten up and tighten it up? Yes. Elisha, amen, knew what he could do. It had nothing to do with what the young man was doing. Amen. And he says, show, me, show him the place. He showed him the place where it fell. And Elisha cut down a little supper stick. Probably a dead stick. And he cast it into the Jordan River. Yes. And the scripture says, the iron did swim. Mm -hmm. Amen. It didn't say it floated. It said it swim. Mm -hmm. Now that's something. That's some power. Amen. A piece of iron swimming to the top. Yes. Amen. Swimming lets me know that it was animated. Amen. There was a movement in this piece of the iron. And we 
know that this is against the law of physics, that a piece of heavy metal can float on water. That's impossible for man to do. That takes the power of God. That, that's the power. And the iron probably swam near the bank where the young man was standing. In verse number seven, Elisha said, take it up to thee. And he put forth his hand and he took it. Amen. Yes. Romans, this reminds me of Romans 13 and 1. Let every soul be subject unto a higher power. For there is no power but of God. The power that be are obtained of God. There is no power except the power of God. So he allows us to use his power. Amen. The scripture said not by might, not by strength, but by my spirit, says the Lord. The battle is not to the strong. Amen. But it's by the power of God. Yes, sir. Amen. Let, let's look at this borrowed axe here for a while. Master, for it was borrowed. Amen. It would seem that the student was more concerned about the fight that the axe was not his. That he didn't own it. Maybe if it was his axe, he probably would have felt a little bit better about it. Amen. Because he wouldn't have to replace it right away. But he probably thought first, I mean, that I have no means of replacing or paying the man for the axe that I borrowed. Amen. But when we look a bit deeper, we should realize that every head is borrowed. Every head is borrowed from God. Yes. Amen. Even your own head and your common sense. Amen. It's just God lends it to you for a minute. Amen. So the wife can take ease. The power is not in the husband. The power is in God himself. Amen. The power is in the Godhead. And he's the head of all heads. And if you make God the head of your life, you will never be powerless. Yes, Amen. Don't trust in your own strength. Don't trust in human strength. Trust in the power of God. Hallelujah. And the head of God will never fly off the handle. But man may fly off at any time. He's subject to break down under pressure. Yes, sir. Amen. People su suffer mental breakdowns because they can't function under pressure. Yes, sir. Amen. There are people in the ho in hospitals right now as we speak this morning who have had mental breakdowns. Amen. 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 Go, you know, the mind don't work right anymore because they are flown. The head is off the handle. Yes. Amen. In Matthew. 28 and 18, Jesus said, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power, All power. is given to me in heaven and in earth. Yes. All power. That means everything. Oh, yes. All of it is in the hand of Jesus. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. He got all power. Power. He gives us that power. He gives us power to speak to mountains. Amen. Power to cast out demons. Yes. He gives us power to heal the sick. Yes, yes. Amen. He gives us power. Amen. To build. Power to speak to mountains. Amen. But he allowed us to do it. Amen. God himself could have did it. He didn't have to use these young men. God could have waved his hand in a new school. Could have been, he could have spoken into existence. That's the kind of power he got. But he allow us to use his power. And if you don't use it, amen, you're not going to accomplish much. He didn't just create us to sit around and watch him work. He wanted to do his work through us. And as long as you connect it to the power source, amen, you'll always have power. 
Hey Amen. This reminds me, reminds me of a story once I heard of that a big, large sanctuary. They got a young man to vacuum all the carpet. Hey Amen. They had removed everything from the room. The young man got there and he started up his vacuum cleaner and he put his headset on. He listened to all of this junk rap music and he's just vacuuming and doing his thing and he got too far and he pulled the plug from the power source. Amen. But he didn't hear the vacuum cleaner stop because his head was full of all of this, being fed all of this junk music. Amen. He kept on vacuuming. Finally, he got to the end corner and looked back. He hadn't done anything. Because there was no power attached to the vacuum machine. Amen. But we must remember we should always stay connected to the power source. Amen. And that's what happened. See, the young man's power wouldn't help when the, hand, when the axe flew off the handle. We might fly over, but God will never fly over. Oh, yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is the head oh, yeah. of everything that we see and everything that we do. Yeah, yeah. And the minute we realize that, the better off we'll be. Yeah, yeah. And when a human head flies off the handle, we should do what this young man did. Get in touch with the head of all heads. Yeah. Amen. Go to prayer. That's the best thing we can do for people is to pray for them because God can do it. Yes, sir. We can do nothing without Him. Yes, sir. We can't take one step. We can't get up off of our seat, out of our bed, without the power of God. Yes. Amen. No, I see people sometimes get too proud of their accomplishments. God allows it. Oh, yeah. And when He allows it, He expects you to use it. You are blessed the more he expects from you. Amen. Too many of us sit around and we want more blessing, but we're not doing nothing with what we got. Amen. Amen. We just want to sit and be and, and be blessed. Amen. Lord, bless me to run a mile when I won't take two steps around the corner. A few steps. Hallelujah. Amen. There's a job waiting for you, you gotta get up and go get it. Yes, sir. James has a way of saying faith without works is dead. Yes, sir. And these young students, their faith were not dead, they were willing to work. Amen. Amen. It's a good thing when you get ready to do so, you need see a need, somebody walk up to you and say, Let me do it. Amen. That was a time I tried to do it all, but I stepped back in a hurry now. Yeah. <laughs> you go ahead. Yeah. Amen. I go somewhere with my son, so let me drive. Yeah. Going every now and then, the wife will say, let me do it. But that happened at less frequent. <laughs> <laughs> so anybody see anything that they want to do? Hey, Amen. I'm done. He's a lily in the valley, so oh, bright as a morning star. He's a lily in the valley, so oh, bright as a morning star. He's a lily in the valley, oh yeah, bright as a morning star. Uh -huh. Amen. In the valley, warm right as a morning star. He's a little in the valley, uh -huh. bright as morning star. Hey, he's a little in the valley, uh -huh. bright as morning star. Hey, amen, amen, amen. 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 Somebody found joy. In the 
valley, warm as a morning star. They found joy in the valley. Oh yeah, burning morning star. Yeah, they found joy. Friday morning star.